Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rich again, and I'm doing yet another installment of my master bathroom uh, remodel. So today we're going to be installing the Laticrete Hydrovan sheet membrane on my shower stall. So I need to waterproof this shower, and I'm going to be using a combination of sheet membrane on the floor and some areas uh, that I want extra protection and once I put that down I will be using the uh, Laticrete Hydroband uh, roll-on waterproofing membrane. The sheet membrane comes in uh, 33 inch rolls and it comes in 108 foot uh, length. Uh, so I have way more than I'm actually going to need for this bathroom um, but uh, unfortunately, this is just the smallest size that I could get, and I've been using this um, and cutting it into five-inch sections to do my strips. Rather than buying uh, the Hydra Band uh, tape, I, this the same material, so I'm just cutting and laying it out and doing what I need. So I'm using all of this rather than buying separate banding. Um, works just the same. So as you can see here, I've cut out, I've done a lot of my pre-cutting um, a, a day or so ago, and I'm basically taking the, the sheet, main, sheet membrane, the hydroband sheet membrane, up uh, the wall by about three inches. Um, that should be sufficient. Really, two inches is probably fine, but I was going to go up a little bit higher just to be sure. Because of the shower stall is, so, is, is big enough to where uh, one sheet is not going to work, I'm going to push this one up against that wall and then I'll have another piece that comes across here and I just need to make sure that I overlap it by about um, two inches is what they recommend that you just have an overlap of two inches uh, over top of the, each uh, sheet that you have. Once I put this floor into place I'll be putting some banding on the corners and then putting some sheet membrane on this shelf. Um, and then everywhere else, I'm going to just use the roll-on hydroband uh, membrane uh, to, to waterproof the rest of the shower. In any case, uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, with, with attaching this. So I'll show you as I go. So one of the things that I'm doing that I wanted to share with you was that... Um, show you. In these corners, um, typically you'll you'll purchase a um, an inside corner, and if you have an outside corner, they have outside corner pieces of sheet membrane that you can uh, put in place. Um, I saw a way in which you can um, eliminate that, um, it's so it doesn't introduce more seams um, and buildup on the floor. Is to take the corners rather than. Um, laying a sheet that's flat and then putting band seams all around and then putting the corners is to roll it up like I was talking about, uh, rolling it up three inches up and then the corner area you just tuck that leftover material into these corners here and then you take your banding that comes down the wall and glue it into place and that covers up that hole that's there essentially um, and then it doesn't have, you don't have a seam um, in the actual pan itself. Uh, so I, I kind of like having that and that way you have a full complete uh, pan that goes up three inches all the way around um, without any issues of you know standing water leaking out because you haven't cut um, you know the, the sheet uh, to the edges there and then just hoping that all the, 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 the banding that you've glued down is actually uh, making it waterproof. I mean, it certainly will work, but uh, I feel like that's a better solution um, and a more durable, uh, long-lasting one. So um, I'm going to implement that. So I've mixed up the thin set to kind of a cake batter consistency. It's a little thinner than you would normally use it, um, just because I'm working with the sheet membrane and the Laticrete product, as well as Schluter's. Curdy Band uh, product recommend using a, a V-notch trowel, and this is a, um, a, a 3 16 by quarter inch spacing uh, V-notch trowel. So the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is we need to fill all the voids 
of the membrane so that it's kind of a flat surface. So we're covering up all of the um, the bumps and and pretty much all of the the uh, cable. And then we're going to add a little more to it and then comb it out into uh, this V-notch um, comb. So. Uh, we're going to do it all in one direction like we normally do for tiling just to, to make sure that um, it's collapsing the right way. Um, and then we're just going to lay it down and, and then we're basically going to put it down kind of like uh, wallpaper. Uh, you you want to get it nice and flat and push out all the excess material um, and, and kind of push it all the way to the edges of, of, the, of the seams and then we'll kind of push it upwards since I'm not cut at the edges. I have it going up the wall. I have to kind of push it and then upwards. So let's go ahead and just get some down and then we can work it around. So we want to use the flat side of the trowel to kind of skim this in, kind of burn it in there, and then we'll go ahead and comb what we need to afterwards. When I first started, I started putting it up here before I put anything down, but I just felt like it was going to be too hard to try to have this sticky and have that sticky to be able to maneuver the, the, the sheet membrane around, so I waited on this. I, I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but... loose a little bit so that I can get get some mud in behind there and then I can all right so now we've got a little just a little plastic drywall spatula then I'm just gonna work my way 
to the edges. There's like air pockets in here. You want to try to get these air pockets out.
it's a good idea to kind of give it a crease so that it kind of goes inside there a little easier. Not have to fight it as much. All right, so now that I got all the seams uh, of the Dieter heat membrane sealed up uh, and basically making this a waterproof uh, floor all the way across, I finally need to finish one little spot where, um, where the wire ends and uh, terminates. It's a little bit bigger than the rest of the wire, this area, this piece right here that, that they have um, like shrink sleeved on there. So I've had to cut out a little section. So we're going to go ahead and put some sheet membrane over top of that to make that waterproof as well. So I have a little bit of extra thin set that uh, I need to use up um, rather than waste it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a little extra sheet membrane that I have and run a border around uh, the water closet uh, just in case for some reason down the road the toilet has a leak or something like that that the floor will be pretty much waterproof in case um, you know, if I do have a leak, it will not seep to the next floor and I'll have it run up the walls. So I've cut a piece for this back wall. It's kind of a T-shape, so it's got a notch here and it's got a notch here. 
So it's going to fold, fold like that. And this will overlap that one. And then this one will overlap the edge seam there so that it will be somewhat waterproof. Obviously there's always going to be a little bit of like a pinhole right here, but I'll try to wrap that into where it's, uh, you know, got a lot of uh, thin set in there to try to stop it. If anything, I can get some of the hydroband liquid membrane and, and dab the corners there because I still need to do that with the shower. I've had a chance to allow the sheet membrane that I previously installed to cure and now we're going to apply some liquid membrane to the remainder of the shower so that it is fully waterproof and that we can do our flood testing before we start tiling. So I'm going to be using Laticrete's Hydroband Waterproofing Liquid Membrane. And it works in tandem with their other Laticrete products, and that's the reason why I'm using it. And it, it actually is a little bit thicker than some of the other brands out there. Um, and I, I wanted to stay consistent with the, the waterproofing products that I'm using. The beauty about the liquid applied membranes is it's very forgiving because of the thickness of it. And it, it goes on uh, really nicely and provides a good uh, waterproofing and shedding ability. Now for the floor, I definitely wanted to have the sheet membrane, but uh, I will be using the liquid membrane on all the walls in the transition areas uh, just to give it some extra, extra protection. And then also in, in the seam areas where the uh, sheet membrane overlaps. Um, and so just to give me some extra added insurance. Uh, you know, the product itself is probably anywhere from um, $110 to $120 per gallon. In the grand scheme of things, it's a very small uh, price to pay to give yourself a little added security that you're not going to have any leaks in the future. So I'm going to be applying it in, in various locations. The beauty of Laticrete's product is that it is designed to cure within two hours at a 70 degree Fahrenheit. So you can begin to do your flood testing after two hours, uh, after it's cured, and then you can also begin tiling as well. So it's really great in the sense that if you are a professional user and you want to get the job done quicker, it allows you to do so because of its uh, speed and its cure times. Um, I'm not necessarily concerned about that. I'm just wanting the best product for my shower and it seems to be a little bit thicker product, so I'd rather have that added benefit of a, the thickness of the film that, that, that it provides. Some of the things that you might need to apply this liquid membrane are a half inch nap roller. Uh, I like to use a thicker roller just to get more on the walls and allow that to uh, build up some of the film thickness that you might need. And then you're also going to need a brush, and I'm using a 3-inch uh, brush that you can apply into the corners and in the transition areas. So just like any other painting job, there may be areas in which you want to protect from getting this liquid applied membrane on. So I'm going to be applying tape to the borders of the shower uh, so that I can protect the wallboard that is not going to be tiled, um, primarily on this section and then also here on the edges. Um, and so we're gonna do that first 
and then I will go ahead and start the application process. So let's go ahead and open up the can of the Hydroban and on the top of the lid there's <clears throat> there's a set of instructions here that you want to take a look at um, prior to doing any kind of uh, application just to make sure that you have the proper substrate and that you're using the procedures that they're, they're, um, the Laticrete is indicating that you need to use for this product. And so you can see how thick this material is. Um, all right, so we're just going to go ahead and get started with doing these corners first and then uh, going through the rest of it. You can kind of see through it because it's kind of thin right now, but I'm just kind of pre-treating it to kind of get a coat on there. Um, it will thicken up with, with uh, successive coats. But we just want to get it applied. So I want to get into these little nooks and crannies right in here because while I did use sheet membrane right here, these little corners, there might be a little pinhole uh, that is not completely sealed. So I want to make sure that I get a good sealing um, and this, this uh, liquid applied membrane will provide that. It doesn't have to be, you know, beautiful, but you want to get it protected. You just want to make sure that it's not like all clumpy. Because you are going to put another coat on it. And, and that one can be a little heavier. This is such a small spot that I think I'm just doing it all with the brush. So... I'm just getting it covered. I'm getting ready to do the rest of the field now, so I'm going to use this roller. Uh, I got a, a rolling, I got a, a paint pan, but I think I'm just going to dump it in here because I'm not necessarily concerned about it's so thick that it's not going to be dripping all over the place. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this will probably work just fine um, for what I need. Save me from having to use that paint tray. We're just going to put it on there and see how it goes. So part of the extra step that I want to take is to, uh, to make sure that I put some of this liquid membrane over top of these seams right here where it overlaps. Obviously this is supposed to be waterproof and it should be fine, but I just want to have a little extra protection. It's, I already have this out, so it's not a big deal. 
Um, and then I'll also want to uh, put a little bit of this liquid membrane on the transition from, from, the mem from the sheet membrane to the actual drain flange so that this is a uh, tight waterproof seal. Probably already is, but uh, just why take the chance when I have this extra? Might as well use it. So I want to kind of clean up the edges because I don't want, when the grate is on, I don't want to be able to see uh, the green that's there. So I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. All right, so we've got it coated, one full coat uh, on all the uh, areas that we need to protect. So we're gonna go ahead and wait two hours and we'll come back and do the second coat. It's been about two and a half hours since we put the, the coating on and we've got a good uh, olive drab color. So it's pretty dry. I see a few spots that are not quite completely dry. I think I may have um, overloaded it a little bit more in the corners than, than some of the other spots. So it's taking a little longer for it to dry. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dab those up to try to soak up some of the excess so that it does dry and then go ahead and give it another coat because um, it looks like I may have you know, put a little bit too much in that little spot there. Okay, I used it all. <laughs> I was able to get it all a second coat. I did wait until the end to try to uh, finish up the, the cement board above the shower head. Um, since I had some leftover, I went ahead and did it all, at least one coat up there. It's not two coats, but really it's not going to... Uh, see much water anyway so it's not like that's a big deal and then uh, I went ahead and did the whole floor because <laughs> I had it and I might as well use it so it's just gonna give me an extra layer for protection 
on the floor of just the immediate shower area. Uh, for the most part, this should be complete. I'll probably let it sit overnight just to I'll allow it to get good and cured, and then I'll go ahead and do a flood test. Hopefully, this was helpful in terms of looking at how far the uh, a gallon will go. Just as a reminder that this is 45 by 42 uh, at eight foot ceilings. So it will cover it head to toe <clears throat> and even the floor, two coats. Uh, maybe it's a little bit thinner. I could have probably gone a little heavier, but I did go three coats on all the corners and coves. So I feel pretty confident about it. Uh, and I'm also using sheet membrane. So I think it should be sufficient for what I need. So hopefully this is useful. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Love for you to make, make some comments, have a chat. Hopefully this video, um, you know, teaches some folks. Hopefully I point out some things and, you know, in the comments people can learn from, from what I'm doing here. If you liked it, please hit the like button or subscribe to my channel to get uh, further updates on this master bathroom and any other projects you might have. Okay, folks, I'll see you in the next one.